Good morning. Today is Monday the 18th of July and it's a ferial in the 16th week of a church's ordinary time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show favour, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in faith, hope, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the prophet Micah, chapter 6. Listen to what the Lord is saying. Stand up and let the case begin in the hearing of the mountains, and let the hills hear what you say. Listen, you mountains, to the Lord's accusations. Give ear, you foundations of the earth, for the Lord is accusing his people, pleading against Israel. My people, what have I done to you? How have I been a burden to you? Answer me. I brought you out of the land of Egypt. I rescued you from the house of slavery. I sent Moses to lead you with Aaron and Miriam. And the people reply, With what gift shall I come into the Lord's presence and bow down before God on high? Shall I come with holocausts, with calves one year old? Will he be pleased with rams by the thousand, with libations of oil in torrents? Must I give my firstborn for what I have done wrong, the fruit of my body for my own sin? What is good has been explained to you, man. This is what the Lord asks of you, only this, to act justly, to love tenderly, tenderly, and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. And the Gospel is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12. Some of the scribes and Pharisees spoke up. Master, they said, we should like to see a sign from you. He replied, it's an evil and unfaithful generation that asks for a sign. <clears throat> the only sign it will be given is the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the sea monster for three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. On judgment day, the men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation and condemn it. Because when Jonah preached, they repented. There is something greater than Jonah here. On Judgment Day, the Queen of the South will rise up with this generation and condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. The Gospel of the Lord The first reading from the prophet Micah, roughly the same time as the prophet Isaiah. This chapter 6 is in the form of a court hearing, and... It's, it was a common way of pleading different causes and making points to each other. In this case, God called on the mountains, the stable mountains that were always part of Israel, and said, mountains, be witness. And then God asked a whole lot of questions. What more could I have done for you, Israel? I brought you out of Egypt. I gave you freedom. I gave you the land of your choice. I gave you fruit and crops. What more could I have done for you? The people reply, saying, well, you tell us, Lord, we have done wrong, how can we put it right? And then it goes through a whole series of offerings, you know, offering lambs, offering oxen, offering oil by the gallon, even to the point of the pagan offering of firstborn child. And God says, no, that's not, none of those offerings matter to me, that's not what I want from you. And then we get the three, I think, the three simplest points that sum up the, God's relationship both in the Old Testament and in the New. God asked this, and I'll read it again slowly because they're the most beautiful lines. This is what the Lord asks of you, only this, to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with your God. Those three lines that are often on cards, greeting cards, holy cards, but they do sum up our relationship with what God is looking from us because he gives them to us too. To act justly, we should do what is right, especially in terms of social justice. 
both Micah and Isaiah, along with the earlier prophets Amos and Hosea, spoke constantly about acting justly, giving justice to the poor, to the widows, to those who are in need. To love tenderly, and that's got a, should we say, a, an intimate ring about it. To love God is not some fearful ogre up on the top of a mountain, but a personal God who comes close to one. In the New Testament we know Jesus over and over again comes close to us, our shepherd, our food, the one who, who is close to us. And then lastly, to walk humbly with your God. To walk is very often seen in terms of both pilgrimage and in terms of behaviour. But to walk humbly with our God is to submit, to be humble, to accept, to say, my God made me, my God loves me, my God cares for me. To walk humbly is to accept all those truths about our relationship with God and to make them part of our lives. So all day, if you can, write these three words down, these three lines, to act justly, to love tenderly and to walk humbly with our God. That's what God asks of us. The Gospel is a request by the Pharisees for a sign. And Jesus knows all about signs because there are lots of were fake, fake healers, fake magicians around at the time, giving lots of signs. They said, no, I don't trust signs. You've got signs from your own writings. And he gives two signs. Sign of Jonah, clearly referring to Jesus' death and resurrection. Jonah's three days in the belly of the whale before he got sicked up. And then Jesus is three days dead before he rises from the dead. And then wisdom. And they've got their own wisdom, but they don't recognize it. And he says, ah, but the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, came all the way to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And something much greater is here. Jesus, the true wisdom of God. So we have the reply that there are two signs, sign of Jonah, Sign the Queen of the South, showing the truth of who Jesus is and his message. They were hard-hearted, they wouldn't listen. We, we trust that we have listened, but we know we must review and constantly improve our listening so that we do, as Micah says, act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly with our God. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Father, may your kingdom come. Almighty Father, the heavens cannot hold your greatness, yet through your Son we have learned to say, Father, may your kingdom come. We praise you as your children. May your name be kept holy in the hearts of all mankind. Father, may your kingdom come. Help us to live in the hope of heaven today. Make us ready to do your will on earth. Father, may your kingdom come. Give us this day the courage to forgive others as you forgive us our trespasses. Father, may your kingdom come. Father, be with us in all our trials. Do not allow us to fall away from you. Father, may your kingdom come. And we pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord God, who entrusted the earth to men and women to till it and care for it, and made the sun to serve their needs, give us grace this day to work faithfully for your glory and for our neighbour's good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God come down on you and remain with you always, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless. Have a good day. I wish you all the best.